Philosophy of Heritage Tavern is really approachable fine dining, almost like a, the tavern where everyone knows your name kind of approach. We really wanted to take more global cuisine and focus on local Wisconsin ingredients. You know, $50 steak all the way down to an $11 ham sandwich. But the ham, of course, we raise the pigs and cure ourselves. Uh, Heritage Pigs started very much as a hobby, and then it really just kind of took off. So now we have the Fox Heritage Farms line, Willow Creek line, our catering side already started with an off-site kitchen that we have in uh, Fitchburg, Wisconsin. Now uh, it's three and a half, going on four years, like five days ago, which is pretty stellar. We're heading out to J. Henry and Sons Bourbon. It's a local farm 20 minutes outside of Madison. We're gonna get a tour of the property and uh, kind of discuss how the outstanding the field dinner is gonna go. Liz, how are you? I'm great. Good Thank to see you. Thank you for coming. I'm super excited about a tour. Would you like to go and do the tour before we do a little taste? Yeah, please. All right, yeah, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> We've been farming here all of Joe's life. This is our seed corn operation. Everything on this side of the building or the land is dedicated to seed corn production. And then the building where we're going to see the barrels and where the magic happens, that's related to bourbon production. Go ahead. Oh man, that smells amazing. That's the barrels breathing. Wow. As long as bourbon is in the barrels, it's a living, breathing thing, and it's moving in and out of the barrels. We consider Wisconsin and our terroir a really great part of how our bourbon ends up being produced because in Wisconsin, this is an unheated, non-electrified warehouse. So it's at the mercy of Wisconsin weather. And what happens when that happens is the barrels expand and contract and expand and contract and pull the bourbon into the wood and squeeze it out of the wood. Oh, sure. Really oh. a great thing for the flavors. So this is a traditional dairy barn that has been repurposed for housing and aging and maturing bourbon. And how many barrels do you have in here? We started in 2009 putting our first batch down and we put about 100 barrels a year down. Now we have over 800 because we've increased it and expanded it to a couple of hundred barrels a year. We do all large traditional barrels, traditional aging. Um, these are 53 gallon, which is the large barrels and then they're racked so that there's good air circulation so that they're all breathing while they're in here. Oh and sure, it's alive in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Excellent. So here are our sons. Uh, hey guys. Hi. Our son Joe. 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 Dan. Nice Pleasure to meet you. Jack's really nice to meet you. Jack. So do you want to give him a sample, Jack? Family business. I love it. <laughs> I'm really excited that you get to try our new Bellefontaine Reserve. Bellefontaine Reserve is finished in cognac barrels, which are a larger barrel. What else do you want to tell us right about there. them, Jack? We get that traditional uh, bourbon flavor from aging it in the oak for five and a half years. And then when we bring it over into the larger cognac barrels, it picks up a lot of that fruity, sweeter flavors that are really popular, especially here in Wisconsin, where, um, you know, I'm sure you know everyone likes brandy here. Yeah, brandy's king in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. That's really good. <laughs> Full thank strength. You. Yeah, that's, uh, that's perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here. Honor is ours. Thank you. Yeah, thank it's a privilege. Honestly, I'm super excited to taste some more bourbons. Can All right. Try some more? Let's go to the tasting Excellent. room and try a few more. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> so Dan, this is our tasting room and this is Joe, Hi, my Joe. husband. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you again. Good yes, to see you. Sir. Absolutely. Pleasure. Welcome to the tasting room. This is the Joe behind Jay Henry. Our sons are Joe and Jack, and this is Joe the husband. <laughs> so let's do a tasting. The first one I'm going to pour for you is our small batch, 92 proof bourbon. The other thing we always offer people, and a lot of folks don't realize that this is equally as important, is we try to add a drop of water and the drop of water opens the nose. And what's the best way to taste this? Bourbons should be treated like a good red wine. They should be let to breathe. They should be sipped and savored. You wanna bring the glass up to your nose. See if you can 
smell things from the top and the bottom edge. So after you do that, take your little sip, move it around through your mouth. Some people chew. That's really just to get more oxygen into your mouth and make sure that you're really tasting the bourbon. That's pretty fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. you gotta be proud of that. Yeah. Thank That's you. really interesting. I never uh, approached bourbon the same way as red wine. So Joe, I, I really had no idea that uh, we had a bourbon farm mm -hmm. 20 minutes outside of Madison. Right. I thought bourbon was uh, just a pure Kentucky thing. A lot of people think that bourbon has to be made in Kentucky, but actually the law is that it needs to be made in the United States. Part of the story is that bourbon has to be made by law again, 51% corn. Of course that piqued my interest because obviously we're in the corn business and we decided that that might be kind of a neat diversification. My father bought this place, the farm, in 1946, and then this was our family home. About two and a half years ago, we decided to make this into a tasting room for our bourbon business, and uh, I can guarantee you it didn't look like this when I was a kid. So I was probably conceived in the bedroom right above us, actually. Well, that's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our Patton Road Reserve. It's five years aged, named after the road we're on, and this is the purest expression of our bourbon. So all we do with this product is select a barrel that we think is a really great example of what bourbon should taste like. And then we literally just take the product out of the barrel and bottle it. We filter it so that there are no chunks of barrel in there and anything else, but that's it. This one is my personal favorite, because this is true sipping bourbon. Yeah, that is uh, spectacular. Thank you. Yeah, that little cherry note, Tom, slightly like uh, almonds or the pits of stone fruits. Yep. Kind of yep. comes out a little bit. Yep. I think I'm in the wrong line of work here. <laughs> well, bourbon goes better with delicious food, and we really feel honored and fortunate to work with someone who is really focused on creating a beautiful, crafted, locally produced product like you and your pork farms and all of the other activities that Oh, sure, doing. thank you, yeah. Well, it starts at the farm, so uh, that's the reason why we're here. Well, I've gotta say, I'm really looking forward to this dinner. I think it's just an amazing setting out here, uh, amazing bourbon, so I think it's uh, for outstanding the field, it's gonna be just perfect. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, we're looking to, uh, looking forward to it. It's gonna be exciting, and, uh, uh, and knowing your, your food and your cooking, it's gonna be wonderful. We're honored. Excellent. Cheers. To a great dinner. A great dinner. My name is Colin Dorward and I'm with Outstanding in the Field. I manage our public tour. We do 86 dinners, we hit 40 states. We say we typically feed about 12,000 diners during our season. You know, we really are a, a food circus, a culinary circus. That's what we are. We roll into a town and, and we have a dinner the next night. Sure, we're a national organization, but what we do is come into a place and we really strive to support the local economy. And today we're in Dane, Wisconsin. Dan wanted to work with Jay Henry today and he uses their bourbon quite often in the restaurant and thought it would be a great site. It is, it's beautiful, we're excited to be here. We have 160 people coming tonight and it should be awesome. I just, I just wanna say thank you all for coming and I think we're in for a real treat with Dan Fox's dinner and these guys are doing a, a wonderful job. Thank you. It's, it's just an incredible honor for us to be hosting this event. And as our logo says, reward yourselves. Reward yourselves with this beautiful meal, this beautiful day, and some delicious bourbon. In the lineage of American cooking, excellence used to be marked by some European technique and understanding of what was delicious and a crisp white chef's coat. So much could be accomplished with those and terrific plating. But American cooking consciousness has changed now some of our best chefs are mixing a wise understanding of animal husbandry and soil husbandry of the true American palate. Chef Dan Fox is one of those chefs. 
He's paired today with a third generation family farm in Wisconsin, Jay Henry, who have broadened out their offerings of rye and wheat and corn into the most distinctive and American of spirits, bourbon. It's the American plate writ large in the middle of a field, but that could only be served in Wisconsin. Chef Daniel Fox, my friend. Kyle, how's it going? How are you? Good, it's good, good. to see you. I'd prefer that you shake my elbow than, I mean, that's a sharp knife. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a pretty good partnership. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, we met Liz and Joe uh, just about a year ago now. Just fell in love with it immediately. It was kind of a match made right away. The menu that you have tonight is just, uh, I'm overexposed, right? It is so sublime and just on point, but a bourbon dinner is really kind of a distinctive thing. So what are you doing tonight that you don't do in the restaurant that is unique or you were really stoked about that you don't normally do, but you put on the menu tonight? Uh, actually, all of these dishes are brand new. Um, <laughs> wow, uh, that's gutsy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we've done similar ideas. I've obviously done heirloom tomato salads. We've done large pork platters, uh, but the combinations uh, they are all uh, very unique to this event. You're sort of pork centric, uh, but I scanned the menu and you've got a fish dish on there, which is not, um, you can't argue it came from these fields. Yeah, you know, I got to have some variety in there, uh, but I can't argue that the uh, fish very much helps uh, share the story as far mm -hmm. as uh, the technique we're using roasting the fish. Yeah. We took the uh, barrels that the whiskey was aged in, uh, deconstructed them. Uh, put a little bit of oil on the white fish. And then you go to roast the fish on... On the barrel planks. Oh, that's... Cedar plank roasted, barrel dude, plank roasted. That's pescatarian gnarly. I yeah, like that so. a lot, yeah. And then, of course, add a little bacon down there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. How you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Yes, Hello, hey. Katie. So tonight we are making a really fun cocktail for everyone tonight. It's starting off with J. Henry bourbon, a little fresh squeezed lemon juice, house-made lemoncello with vanilla, and then we're topping that with Wollersheim rosé that I've infused with farmer's market raspberries. And it's gonna be really light and refreshing for today. So I brought the Wollersheim folks to drink the right, Wollersheim rosé. see you again. <laughs> Would you like to try the cocktail? Sure. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Right Cheers, yeah. Philippe, Julie. Little uh, roller shine rosé yeah. and other good things. Yeah, on top of some bourbon. I've yes. never been, yeah, a straw guy, so I'm... Um, Just for mixing. There's a cocktail in my flower. Oh, that's terrific. Wow. That'll set you right on a summer day. So this is? That's the grilled beef tenderloin with the chimichurri sauce. And? And that um, tiny little potato. potato. Got a little potato. baby carrot. Shrimpy little carrot, okay. Cooked in a little bit of ash. Oh, from the barrels. From the barrels, and we also did it with the corn, with the husk, so mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. and corn the husk and the from the farm. Barrel ash from the charred and toasted yep. bourbon barrels. Yep. On this delicious hors d'oeuvre. Yep. I feel like I've done so much already. <laughs> I'm gonna go poke yeah. somebody. If you brought a plate, they're on my left. If you need to borrow a plate, they're on my right. We'll see you at the table. So we've all just sat down. I've got the Henry family next to and across from me. There seems to be just under 190 of us about to have an outstanding dinner. I gotta try that barrel ash. The, the barrel ash is the last thing that comes out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And it's soaked up uh, ash with, got all kinds soaked of bourbon. bourbon. Yeah. Some of the ash that we made uh, for roasting the potatoes and carrots, we ground down with uh, breadcrumbs and kosher salt or sea salt and we're sticking the little baby vegetables out of the ash. Uh, you'll have snap peas, yellow wax beans, radishes. We actually grabbed some of the baby corn uh, off the stalks 
that's going to be raw, uh, which uh, I thought was super cool. Um, so the idea is people will just kind of pick the veg right up out of the soil and they'll dip it into uh, a cheese fondue. This fondue is something that I'm most excited about because we've got veggies from the Dane County Farmer's Market, but this is a whiskey spiked creme du coulis fondue because in Wisconsin, a little whiskey in your fondue never hurts. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. Oh, that's so great. Who knew that eating literally charred remains of bourbon barrel would right. be this tasty? I think we have another product we can sell. Absolutely. Yeah. Barrel ash. Yeah. Fish with uh, shishito peppers, bacon, yeah. roasted it on the barrel stage. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. There's a line. Yeah, you you want to just grab that one on the stage, and you could see where the bourbon soaked into the oak. And right there, that's the happy juice of bourbon being made, soaking into wood. That's <laughs> right. This is great. The white fish soaks up the flavor so much. That is unlike any other plank roasted fish I've ever had. 80 year old vines, medium body, spicy, bright, and red fruit. So, I've got to say, this paired with the Wallersheim Riesling is an amazing Wisconsin triumvirate. We've got your bourbon staves, we've got Great Lakes Whitefish, we've got a little bit of pork that Dan Fox raises for his restaurant, and then we've got this great Riesling. I would. This is legit. Mm. That's a great pairing. Yeah. This is our grits with uh, the red seed corn. It's a very pronounced, very strong corn flavor. Uh, what's amazing about it is the texture. Uh, it just really gives a nice, uh, nice bite. And we're taking bandage cave age cheddar from Blue Mont Dairy and folding that in. Joe, start laying all, all the plates for the pork, please. Awesome. The heritage pork. We have pork chops, or we call them tomahawk chops, they have the whole bone on there, and a garlic sausage and a knockwurst. Uh, then we have braised pork shoulder that'll be center of the plates. We're very much featuring Willow Creek today. Here we go. Did you, is this the whole farm basically in this plate? Yes. Right, all of Willow Creek is, yeah. Can you, would you hand me a plate? What can I get for you, Mr. Henry? Uh, a little, uh, little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah. We're gonna get you a head cheese, cheese wow. ball, a little bacon. Oh, wait, oh, there's grits. There's grits underneath. Oh yeah, you gotta go deep. Underneath all of this is the trotter. It's basically the foot of the pig that they've deboned and then stuffed. And I'm going big on these silver dollars. Oh, yeah, it's it great. Yeah. So, Joe, tell me, what do you think? You always eat like this on your farm? Well, I wish I did, but um, this is really wonderful. We used to raise hogs on our farm, but not anything like this. It's kind of a, a pretty sweet moment. Uh, we're going to plate up desserts. Uh, we have these really beautiful Wisconsin stone fruit galettes uh, with uh, some pretty awesome uh, whiskey anglaise that we're going to be serving here in a moment. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. Like I said, we couldn't have done it without you. Dan Fox will be speaking soon, and obviously he's the star of the show. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, the Henrys. Thank you so very, very much. Please raise your glass to opening up your home and your farm to us today and making this amazing, amazing bourbon for us to uh, enjoy. And really, I have nothing more to say than just thank you so very much for supporting what we do, uh, supporting local food, supporting the restaurants that myself and all of my peers work so very hard 
uh, to continue to bring you every day. So please, thank you again.